viewers welcome to another episode of ekosokoni tv channel we are pleased and we are happy for your support so far as we move we want to show you about watermelon farming uh, welcome, welcome guys to our farm at ruiru my names are farmer richard mondi we do at this farm we do watermelon farming and we've partnered with ekosokoni ekosokoni aids us in terms of marketing in terms of agrovet and online online on, on, online advertising and also they provide us with expertise in terms of production so we have no worry in terms of when we want to produce our fruits or rather when we are doing our farming we have all that under one basket so guys i would, I would urge you to to look for ecosokoni when you want to sell your products because they 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 do all types of all types of farm produce you can talk to them they will market your products and as soon as you can think of you get the customers thank you from uh, richard um, please, your farm is so good just see what we have here good watermelon we appreciate we appreciate so much yes so so far we've learned few things throughout the journey the melon you can see here it is one one month three three weeks old since planted and you can see the flower it is already producing flowers some others having fruits so i cannot say it's bad there's some hope in it thank you so much and just to ask what's your background in agriculture okay my background in agriculture is through a lot of practical practical we've done a lot of practicals in so many farms eh? aside yeah. from this we try to do also other types of ventures in farming like garlic farming bulb onion farming tomatoes strawberries etc etc so you learned farming in school from we have institutions we are which of agriculture where did you learn farming okay farming i learned through just in the field i cannot say i went to school to do farming i don't have that that paper that i can produce to say that i went to school to study farming no, no, no. i will be lying to you i but i've done farming through doing going to different fields throughout the country even outside the country like a country like this, tanzania we've been there we've done a lot of farming with different kind of farmers so through that it gave me a lot of exposure to this farming i've been able to, been able to know different types of farming like garlic as i've said before tomato and also the different varieties of farming yes thank you so much if i am to ask again yes why did you decide to venture on watermelon i decided to do watermelon because previously i had done here yeah, garlic and since i had done garlic i decided to do a crop rotation so that when i uh, after I've already harvested the watermelon. Now I can go back to garlic. Yeah. Thank you. What is the climatic conditions for melon? Like, what do we need? The climatic conditions. Okay, watermelon. Watermelon thrives very well in a uh, loam, sandy soil. Like uh, this one. Like this one. And also, this one. This one is not loamy. And this one also, looks clay. This one is clay, black cotton soil. Eh? Yeah. This one is also black cotton. It does well in black cotton soil. But also, it it thrives well in a very hot region. Yes. So, like, the more the sun, the better. The better for it, it because it you find it, it becomes bigger, and it also adds that sweetness. Yes. And about watermelon, so which variety do you plant? Okay, the variety that you can, the the variety that you are seeing here yes. is called Scary F1. Why Scary? Because Scary, we realized. It is the one that is preferred within this area. We find most of the farmers along or, 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 or around this region are doing scurry because scurry it is thriving well under this soil. In this place, this one is the most preferred to this area. The scurry one. The, the scurry. Yeah, it's called scurry F1. Yes. Thanks so much. Take us through the journey of agriculture, the way you plant soil. I see we have your, the way you have made your soil okay. and everything. So one thing we start with land preparation. When you're doing land preparation, you have to ensure that you you've done you've tilled your land very well. Yes. You've removed all the weeds. Then another thing you can see 
you already have the drip system in the farm, right? So with the drip system, you have to lay the drips along. You have to lay the drips to the to the place that you are planting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because drips will drips aids you when you are doing your irrigation. But then after yeah. setting up the drip, the drip itself will guide you on how to prepare your planting holes. So the planting holes, like this one you can see over here, this space from this plant to this plant is about 90 centimeter. The reason being, we need this space over here for this melon to, to expand. When it is expanding, you need that space and also the flowers, the, not the flowers, the vines need that space to, to move along. Yes. And then there's also this gap over here. Many a times people ask me, why all this space? Don't you feel you are wasting your land? No, I won't say I'm wasting my land. Because this space, melon needs a lot of space. If you squeeze the land that you say another line will pass here, another line here, you won't have a productive type of farming. Because you'll find your melon are a bit smaller in terms of in terms of size and also they won't be sweet because they will be competing for nutrients in the ground right yes yes that th those are the, re the key reasons number three is all about planting before planting ensure you put a lot of manure in the holes which manure do you use manure you can use cow dung manure you can use goat manure you can use sheep manure and farmyard manure why don't you use the artificial fertilizers like the one you buy from Okay, we can still use the artificial fertilizer, but reason behind me not using that eh, is that this land we want to improve the after we've done okay we conducted a soil test for this land and we found out that this land that it lacks some nutrients in the soil. So if you found out that your land is not well in terms of nutrients, you'll have to do something to regain that nutrients back. Right? So and the reason behind that, that is why we decided to use the the sheep manure like here we use the sheep, use manure. sheep manure yes because sheep manure it stays for a long time in the soil and it improves improve the soil structure yes and that's why you can see the, the plants are so green and you can compare even to other places you can see the difference yes yeah ah yeah after you've done all that you put your manure in the soil now you plant each hole you put two seedlings two seedlings per hole. The reason behind that eh, is that you'll find when the seeds are growing, some will grow, others won't grow. So the other seedling that you, you added one, it will, it, will sup, it will supplement the other one. In case it dries up or it doesn't grow, or in case even the cricket, like here we had a problem with cricket. Yeah, because of the yeah. I see the soil. Yeah. The you can see this. The there are some places that, that there are some places that doesn't have seedling. Tell Rather, a lot of places. Yeah, there are some places that doesn't have enough seedling, and there are places that you realize the seedling are growing. They are still very young compared to the other ones that are still they are bigger. Yes. Ah, yeah. Then another thing. Now it comes after you have planted your seedling. You for about a week, you realize after a week you realize that the seedlings are already coming up. When they have already come came up, eh, now we need to spray the supplements to to improve to promote rather to promote the growth. You spray, you spray, yes, you spray supplements like Easy Grow. Like here we use the Easy Grow starter, right, and the optimizer. Optimizer is a stress reliever for the plants. If you spray as optimizer at these early stages and you also include the easy growth starter, definitely everything will move on as you expect. Just to cut you short, yes. Where do you get your manure okay. and seeds? Okay, my manure, my manure I found I just bought from the Maasai. If you go along Thika Road eh, yes. at a place called Toll, you will see them just along the road. They're selling manure, like goat manure, sheep manure. Then, then the seedling, eh? the seedling I bought at a certified agro. Yes, you have to go to a certified agro where you are very sure they won't sell you something that later on come to not to grow up 
well or rather have some issues with, with the plant yes okay and you talked about stress yeah. that we need a stress reliever yeah what causes stress in our seedlings in whatever you are growing okay stress re stress usually comes up within the plant because you realize when you plant all the seedlings here eh, you realize there are some seedlings that are coming up so quickly others are coming slowly so that is stress and stress is caused by the seed breaking of the seed dormancy there are seedlings that takes time to break that dormancy so what causes them to break to, to reduce in terms of breaking dormancy it is the stress and that's the reason we are spraying optimizer to combat all that let's go to cost yeah. and discuss the cost yes. i understand this is one acre no 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 it's not one acre it's about a half an acre oh it's a half an acre yeah. so in a half an acre yeah. how much seeds do you plant according to my spacing because the other people 90 centimeters this is spacing. 90 centimeter yeah? Yeah. and the in between these are one 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 point eight meters eh? one point eight one point eight meters oh. in between rows from plant to plant is 90 centimeter according to all that measurement that i used here i planted about 1500 so with 1500 how much did it cost you to prepare the land by the seeds make the drips I, I see a lot of drips here do transplanting and all that and okay. taking care optimizer spring let's say you are the amount which will cost you until our plants are ready are ready to be taken to the harvest yes okay for you know me i'm not a starter right? yes. as i've said before i had planted here the garden i had planted garden yes. so i had already set up the drip so i didn't incur that cost of setting up the tree. Whatever I incurred the cost was only the repairing of these holes and uh, now the spring, spring, spring of all those supplements of these plants and now the weeding like you can see here is it's still being weeded up to now because right now rain has rained so it's already the weeds are all over and we are trying to do weeding just to, to ensure that the fruits are good in terms of quality. Yes, so I didn't incur so much cost but for the startups like for the cost you want to do an acre an acre you'll find roughly it can cost you from land preparation drip setup and setting up the drip no you have said the drip planting spraying regimes you are agronomist because you have you must also have an agronomist yeah that is very key it's very key or rather if you are well equipped with the knowledge of doing the melon farming eh? then you don't need the agronomist. But if you don't, please ensure you have an agronomist who will guide you throughout the journey. Because this journey, I can say it's sweet, but at times it is it is made up of hills and valleys that you must encounter through, through this journey. So that is the reason behind I'm saying you need an agronomist. So if you sum up all that cost, roughly an acre usually costs 150,000. 150,000. Yes. And the profitability, you know, if I we are all in agribusiness, yes. If I use 150,000, mm. it means I expect something from it. Yes, true. So, how what's the percentage profit someone can get from watermelon? Okay, we usually do it this way. An acre, an acre roughly holds, or rather produces, or rather uh, when you are doing planting, an acre you can plant 500 seeds. 500, yes. 500 seeds. So from 500, if each vine produces at least between three to four fruits, three to four, fruits. three to three to four fruits. So it means that's around 1,500 fruits to 2,000. Yeah. So just if you do that calculation roughly, an acre can produce about 15,000 to 20,000 fruits. Okay. That is about 1.5 tons. 15 tons to 20 tons. 20 tons. An acre. And that is now 15,000 is with, it is when you have performed poorly, well, poorly. When you have performed better, it is about 20, 20 tons. Okay. Uh, assuming that each ton, or rather each kg, you are selling at a, at a throwaway price, like 10 shillings. 10 shillings. How much is that? It means if one kg is 10 shillings and, you have and one ton is 1,000, it means, okay, 
1,000 kgs. It means one ton, it should, it should be around 10,000. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So if one ton is around 10,000, 10, then you are producing around, did you say 200 tons? Huh? No, 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 I've said 15, it is between 15 tons to 20 tons. Yes. Okay. I think that will give you a, 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 roughly a profit of, let's say, 200,000. 200, That's a good percentage. So it is, it is not bad. It is not bad in that perspective. But you'll find in some other places, like, or rather some other time that when the market is good, eh, you can sell up to 60, between 60 to 50 per kg. Per kg, yes. That is now when the market is so good. As you can see, viewers,